Oh, you want to know another absolutely disgusting secret about me? No, not for you. No, you don't. You just kicked him off your Apple family plan. You just kicked him off your Spotify. You still have the archival screenshots folder hidden on your phone. You know enough. You've seen what you needed to see. I love this video. I love her. Go follow if you're not. That's linked in the caption. No more listening to men about men. No more. You've already seen everything you need to see. You already know everything you need to know. And one of the biggest wastes of my time, once I broke off with like breadcrumb guy, for instance, was uh, overanalyzing. What, what did I do? What could I have I done? Da, 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 da. It's already hard enough. Please do not follow male content creators who are trying to help you understand things more because they're a man and they know men, blah, blah, blah. First of all, I can make a whole video on how they're full of crap. They're full of crap. At best, they're making a fortune off of women who are, who've been traumatized by men and want to crack the code of how to deal, like how to heal from men, how to deal with men, how to date without being hurt, how to understand men. And it's like, they're, they're exploiting that and they make a ton. I have what, like almost 20 years of experience doing comedy, writing, journalism, storytelling, all this stuff. And then some dude will get on a, one of these platforms and be like, hey ladies, if you wanna understand men, I can tell you, and it's all crap. It's all male centric. It's all like, first of all, it's terrible advice usually because they don't even understand how patriarchy might come into all this. And they usually don't understand just how awful men are. Although usually these very men are the worst. They're the worst. And the reason why they know all these secrets is because they used to do it. And now they want to make money off of telling you how they used to do it. Stop listening to them. Start listening to us. We can tell you exactly what these men will do. Right? And we're the ones who are paying for therapy to heal the trauma that these men inflicted on us. So please stop listening to these men. That's the first point. But I have way more to say about this. Even if they're recovered, uh, F-boys, they're not recovered because they are still exploiting women. They may not be, they may be married and da 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 da, right? But men who make content for women are usually exploiting women's trauma, period. And by trauma, I mean the exploitation of men. It could come from domestic uh, labor, invisible labor, mental load. It could be a da da, it could be grape. It could be any of those things. Do not listen to these men. They don't feel bad, and if they do, why should we give them money? Because they feel bad, and they're going to help us. Stop. Support other women. Support other women. If you're going to pay someone with your views and your likes and your donations and all that stuff, stop paying men. They make money off of being pricks. Okay, sorry, I'm done with that. But I want to talk about the subject that he's talking about. He was talking, because I actually have done research on this. I wrote an, uh, a, a reported story on this for Glamour Magazine uh, five or six years ago. So what the topic is, but okay, before I go on, look at this sweet baby. He got his, a vaccine yesterday <clears throat> and I'm a, we're a little worried about him. I think he's a, supposed to be lethargic. I mean, he's always like this, but he's like, anyway, let me just... Like, we shouldn't be worried, right? It's been like 24 hours, right? Okay, anyway, so he's talking about how men who, who can't, he's talking about the, the, the impact of corn on relationships. And, when, you know, if you want to understand why you've been with a man for a long time and you just can't, or whatever. I don't even, don't watch the video. Don't watch the video because it doesn't mean anything. You don't need the context. I'm going to tell you everything. Do not do not click on any of that man's stuff because he makes a ton of money and has way more followers than I can ever possibly dream of and doesn't have information that's useful, okay? Sorry, but I'm, I'm, women don't get paid already enough and so many women have so much vital information here and it drives me crazy that these men just shoot to the moon with nothing. I have slept with a lot of men who could not like blow their blood, um, inside me or during schmegs. And I was like, I just assumed it was because of a corn addiction. 
or something else. Now, before I get into the research that I have to share with y'all, I really want to encourage any woman trying to understand what happened in that relationship. Why, you know, you if you had all the information and you broke up, any time that you are going back reading astrology stuff, I can't tell you how many times I Googled, you know, what is it, Sagittarius woman and blah, 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 man. Why, why, nah, 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 nah. Ugh, none of it helped ever. I'm not saying uh, astrology isn't valuable. I'm saying all that time I can never get back and it literally never helped <laughs> in terms of real compatibility and like, does this, does he like me? If he likes you, you will know. There's, there's no confusion if he really likes you. And trying to figure out what went wrong is where so many women lose our time. Don't f- s- block them on, on all socials. Tr- have a friend help you. Maybe help, help. I mean, you may need to go to therapy about it to deal with it even more. But try to have someone who holds you accountable, like, but not in a like policing kind of way, because then that's kind of weird and puts too much pressure on them. But reach out to your friend every time you want to look at all those videos, right? I'm telling you, it's like an addiction. A lot of these things, it feels like an addiction. A lot of times it was limerence anyway. You didn't even love them, but it's a lot of times usually not even love. But please, part of decentering men is decentering your exes. And I know that you have to grieve things and all that's normal. But some of these situationships, breadcrumbing situations, I can't believe how much time I lost trying to figure out what went wrong. What went wrong is he didn't like you and he sucked. And you deserved better and you realized it, good for you. Every time you go check on his socials, you feel bad about yourself. Don't you? I know I do. Let me know if I'm wrong here, but have you ever gone on social, on the social, any of the platforms, looked up your ex and felt better? Even if you do feel better for a little bit because he looks like he's like not doing well, do you really feel, do you, it's not worth it, is it? Right? It's just, it feels better for your ego, but the fact that you still care also makes you feel like crap. So please trust that you made the right decision. It's over. Decenter your ex too. <laughs> your exes or your former situation. It's not even an ex because a lot of us aren't even dating these men that were just like, what happened? Right? So let's get into the original issue, which is uh, delayed. <laughs> Back when I was writing a lot, because journalism was not literally in a crisis so bad that I'm terrified everything is about to burn down, I literally saved every article I've ever written in my life, which took me hours because I've written lots of articles, 20, over 20, I think, for Glamour alone. I saved them into PDFs because they are literally, the internet is not forever. They're literally Vice is going to be gone soon. So if you like something on Vice, you better make it a PDF now because all that work is disappearing and all those writers are getting forked. Anyway, so when I was still writing, I would pitch articles a lot of times that I was genuinely interested in because either A, it was just something I cared a lot about and I wanted to find answers. I wanted to find, that's why I wrote the Harper's Bazaar um, Men Have No Friends thing. I wanted answers. I wanted to talk about the problem, but I wanted a solution. I wanted actions. I wanted to understand it. And then I wanted to share that with people. So sometimes it's because I just care about it, but usually I like to have hope or a solution or steps we can take because I don't like to just talk about things and be like, oh, well, we're all screwed. (laughs) Men suck. Like, what do you do with that? I don't always succeed at including hope, but I try my best. So, um, this article I wrote for Glamour is called, uh, I blame myself when men couldn't finish during friends. Then I realized that's BS. I don't write the titles of any of my articles, by the way. No, no writers ever write their own titles. Not criticizing the title. I'm just saying, um, don't ever hold a writer accountable for the title. That is not a. So almost, uh, fi- almost five years ago, I wrote this article because my breadcrumb guy that I was hooking up with couldn't hmm, inside of me for like the last several months that we were together. And I was starting to take it real personal. So I wrote like my well, editor at Glamour and I was like, can I take this on? Cause I, I think that it's not just me. And so basically she gave me, you know, told me to go out, find, find the, the, find the research, mix in some of your own story. And let's give some, let's give women something to work with so they stop blaming themselves for men's not being able to. Mm-mm. 
So I'm not gonna go through this whole article because a lot of it's my own story, but I was like hooking up with this one dude uh, many years ago and he didn't want to use a hmm hmm because he was like, I can't, you know, I don't ever blow, I can't hum inside of you. So you don't have to worry about pregnancy. And I'm like, bro, did you know that I could get an STI though? I'm not worried about pregnancy. Like, I mean, I am, but like, okay, this is before, well, long before a Roe v. Wade crisis. But this is how men think. Like, they, they care so little about their own health and your health that they're like, oh, I don't see the problem. That's why I lied about having an IUD. I never told men I had an IUD because I don't want them to pull this crap on me. I want them to think that I'm worried about a pregnancy because they'll be like, yeah, but ooh. So I'm like, nope, you got to wear one anyway. And so I kind of go into some examples of my own about I don't understand why, like, men can't finish. Because what this man ended up doing, it, he was right. Every time we hooked up, he would always, like, pull out and then ask me to, like, I had to dance. I had to dance. I'm like shaking my butt and being like, uh, uh, uh. And he just like, mm, mm, and finished watching me because he could not while he's inside of me. Now, I assume that's because of corn and it may be, but I wanted research to give me answers instead of me just assuming what I had heard on social media. So if you want to read this, it's not behind a paywall. Just Google Melanie Hamlet Glamour and this will come up. So I ended up contacting uh, three different experts on this about what is called officially delayed mm, 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 and how it is very common. And just like ED, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on here. Uh, the cause behind it is uh, physical or psychological, but neither of those had anything to do with me, first of all. That was important because because I'm a woman conditioned under patriarchy, I assume that everything that is a man, has, is going on with men is my burden to bear. It is my problem. It's because of me. It's because I'm not good enough, pretty enough, skinny enough, blah, 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 and all the crap I've been taught to make me hate myself, right? So I assume, oh, it's because I'm not desirable or one of these things. Maybe he should just put a bag over my head and then he'd be able to, uh, uh. you know, like I'll tell myself some stories. And these specialists told me, no, it's not about you, honey. And it's actually usually not about corn either. So corn and the death grip, which is a pseudoscientific idea that <laughs> doing that too hard can leave a dude desensitized. I'm not saying that that's not true, but what I am arguing against is that that cannot be blamed. Um, it's been blamed almost entirely for the spectrum of <laughs> dysfunction plaguing anyone with a <laughs> right? Actually, I just found my hat. I'm going to say this. I love this hat. Huh. Every time, I mean, okay? The things we have to do to not get banned on social media. Now, again, while I said that corn can absolutely cause problems, it is an oversimplification of the issue according to experts. Corn is, is usually only a problem if men are watching it too much, which means, and this is what um, this uh, French um, phrenologist says, uh, she's amazing. I've met her in person. I met her online and did this interview and then I got to meet her in person and she's so awesome. I've learned so much about things. I am really having to deprogram my mind around schmegs, especially growing up in the United States under purity culture, especially in the South, white purity culture. Woo, y'all. Which purity culture is, um, white purity culture in the South is rooted in, misog uh, in patriarchy and anti-blackness in particular, if you didn't know that which is why I am done with purity culture for all the reasons it is bad. But I assumed because of the way I was conditioned that um, Schmegs is always about an O and it's always, you know, about his, <laughs> especially, and all kinds of things. I can go, I have so much to say about all the things I've had to unlearn. But she said, if men are watching it like several times a day, for instance, every day, yes, that's probably going to impact them. And some men are. Again, I am not saying that it is not a problem. Please don't be like, no, but my husband, I know, I know. I know this is a big issue for many men. However, it is way too oversimplistic to let them off the hook with me like, well, you just watched too much. Why? Why are they watching it, first of all? Because you may have an addict on your hands and if you have an addict on your hands, you got much bigger problems than corn. Way bigger problems than corn. So I also uh, interviewed this um, this amazing one, woman, Jenny Schuyler. She's also a, a certified Schmegs and relationship therapist, and she's in Colorado. And she says that this 
Um, it's almost always an issue involving shame or anxiety. Now, um, the French psychologist has also said that depression, anxiety, certain medications, alcohol, like there's so many things that could be causing this. But I was really interested in the shame and anxiety one because that is a lot more, that's a lot deeper than just being like, oh no, I won't stop watching corn. Okay, and then um, Cindy Gallup, who has done a bunch of um, TED Talks, she has this site, uh, she's very big in this world. Uh, she says it's not, corn is not totally blameless, but it's, it's, it's different reasons that corn is involved in this. Corn convinces men that Grey Schmegs is centric, um, that it's all about how big it is and how how hard it is, and you know, and then all these other things like well, all these women are performing what 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 men want to see, but it, like they're, they're all like I mean they're all faking it, y'all. Okay, not all, but so many. I'm like, what? There's no way this woman's enjoying this. And so she's like, when men don't fit into these uh, schmegual stereotypes that are, that are often portrayed on on screen, it's damaging for them and their partners. Not only because of, uh, that's a whole nother video. They're doing stuff to us that we don't want. Like, you know, ugh, like a vi bah, violent stuff. Like, God. Yeah, I should make a whole video on that. Big topic. But a lot of it is like, they don't know what they're doing. They're anxious. Instead of actually researching, like Googling, how do I please a woman? How do I eat? Right? Instead of doing any of that, they just watch corn and be like, that's how it is. Hmm. Meanwhile, women will read them 15 articles on how to give a good BJ. Right? Men will only read stuff if it has something to do with something they actually care about. Like, I don't know, sports, climbing, whatever. <sighs> okay, so not only did I interview these experts, I also interviewed a lot of men, but I did not include their names as a part of just, I promised them I wouldn't. They trusted me. They'd already read the Harper's Bazaar piece and they knew that I would handle their interviews with care. But I said, I, you know, usually in reporting, a lot of times you can't make people anonymous because then people won't believe you're reporting as much. But in this case, I'm not putting a man's name on this um, because it's hard enough to get men to open up about this. But I really appreciate the ones, if you are watching this, who trusted me with your stories. And some of them I was like, wow, I'm really glad I asked about this. So almost uh, all the men that I spoke with about DE talked about feeling nervous and dealing with anxiety or combating shame. Not a single one of them was it about their inability, about their inability to finish had anything to do with how attracted they were to their partners. So I found that relieving based on how many men I've been with who couldn't mm -mm, inside of me. And now like at this time, at this day and age, like you shouldn't have them in, doing that inside of you anyway, given how terrifying, if you're in the United States, especially how terrifying the world is with uh, these men wanting to baby trap you. Stealthing, all of those other forms of SA. So one guy that I talked to and I really appreciate, he was so, he was so great in this interview. So it always takes him forever to finish and he knows that it takes him forever. So in the process, he gets really worried about hurting his partner. Like that he's, he like gets it in his head that maybe he's taking too long. Cause even though we talk about men who don't last more than 30 seconds, like that sucks. But you know what I hate people talking about? It's how they want a man who will last forever. Who are y'all? I don't want this going on forever. Do, do none of y'all ever get taught? Like, it hurts after a while. And, you know, if he knows what he's doing and you feel like you can trust them and you don't have any of your own mental blocks or any other things going on, I don't need you to go on for an hour. How do you walk? Maybe this is just me, but, he, you know, because this man had had um, more than one long-term relationship, he knew that it was uncomfortable after a certain point. And so he didn't want to hurt her. And the more he gets in his head about, oh my God, I'm going to hurt her. I need to, I need to, huh, I need to, huh. You think he's going to come then? But <laughs> he's all worried like I'm hurting her. So then it would take longer. It made it impossible for her, him to finish. So then he would just start like, just, he, he realized he needed to just be up front and be like, hey, this may happen. So at a certain point, like, I'm going to get in my head. Like, they just talked about it. They just talked about it. And as um, Gallup says, um, Tonex is absolutely Im impacted by the mindset for men. Now, Skylar reminded me, uh, I actually found that this really reframed things for me as to why I could never have an O for so long until I was 36. I had my first real O. O is, is about surrendering. With women, the vaginal walls will close down. Sometimes it's guarding and protecting her from either the person in the room or from someone from her past. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so this doesn't mean that you 
can't owe if you have schmegdual trauma. Okay, I'm. Th- this is like this is such a complex subject, but I am saying that um, a lot of people are blocked from being able to surrender and relax and be in their body and actually come close to O's sometimes because they are either disassociated or um, this person feels like a threat because they're a threat or they remind you of someone in your past that's a threat or like you associate schmegs with like feeling threatened and all kinds of things, right? But this this interview really helped me understand why I'm such a schmegual like oh late bloomer it's I, this was so empowering to learn so if this helps you I hope so um I don't expect you to necessarily talk about it in the comments but uh or if you have any resources or and I don't know I just I would like to know that I'm not the only person <laughs> who um was curious about this and had my own struggles with partners or with myself in terms of all this stuff so I love hearing people's wisdom advice um and stories as long as they're not judgmental or mean or any of the things right so dr schuyler added it's not just about some hidden schmegdual trauma or deep-seated phobia um she says sometimes this is actually comes down to fear of commitment can create that roadblock to an o Yep, okay, that makes sense. Not just with myself, but I talked about how that was actually at the heart of the issue with that guy. Because in the beginning, he didn't have that problem. And the longer we were together, and the more I was like, what is this? Are we dating? And I kept pushing for commitment, even though this man was not interested at all. (laughs) This is my breadcrumb guy. Pokemon uh, pillows and bed sheets and stuff twin bed trundle bed the one of two times he let me stay at his place like good it's embarrassing but maybe it'll make you feel less shame I learned my lesson but I couldn't understand why all of a sudden he had this problem with this and I was like oh fear of commitment that could be it alone he doesn't want to date me he literally thought we were signing up for as like once a week little like vacation to like let's act like boyfriend girlfriend island and then not talk for a whole week dude never like uh, it was i will that was one of the worst things i've ever done has been in a break room situation <laughs> maddening another thing that can cause this that she mentioned is not necessarily fear of commitment but i don't know maybe he is married <laughs> like or maybe uh, you're married to him and he's hooking up with someone else and he doesn't feel like this is like some shame. He's ashamed that he's having schmegs with his wife because oopsie, she doesn't know that he has another girlfriend. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's all kinds of things that create a mental, emotional block for men. So for us to reduce this to just, oh, it's just corn. That's actually not helpful to them and it's not helpful to us. Because that Oprah, that's almost like a boys will be boys explanation for all of men's um, schmegual issues. No, men are not that simple. A lot of this stuff goes deep and they don't want to look at it or do the work. And it's easier for us to just be like, oh, it must be corn. No, maybe he's married. Maybe he doesn't want to be with you. Maybe he's anxious. He likes you a lot. That was another thing. A lot of times if they really like you a lot, Okay, he likes a lot, but y'all need to talk about it. But a lot of times it is way deeper than corn. And reducing it to corn robs you of the information that and the truth that you may need to see about this situation and him in order to make a decision that's best for you. And also reducing it to corn lets you be jealous sometimes. Let's, let's a lot of women become jealous of the those women. Blame those women when it's really him and his refusal to deal with himself, which is one of the bravest things that humans can do is to look at that deep, hard stuff, deal with it, work on it. It's so much easier to just go climb Everest (laughs) or um, drown yourself in a bottle or run a marathon or whatever form of escapism. Okay, so what do we do about it? Well, if it's, you know, not like a really big problem, he may be able to deal with it on his own just by talking to you. Like the fact, one of the things that I realized when I was on that tender bender thing 
is that most of the, the men that I hooked up with who were from the United States didn't talk about things the same way I didn't talk about things. And I don't know if it's like a purity culture thing, just a, or, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just the dudes I hooked up with. But I know I was uncomfortable having these conversations. And one of the things I learned from hooking up with men from all over the world, I went on a little, I, I, I you know, bed surfed the world, right? Looking up with dudes from all over. Um, I mean, I lived in LA when I was doing this. And I mean, people pass through there all the time. And what I was really surprised at was how easy it was for most men to, or how, how, how much men from other cultures uh, would talk, would just be direct, talk about it. I was like, oh, we don't have to say that, you know? Like, even as much as like, do you like this? <laughs> Oh God, I was, uh, you would not believe how shy I used to be in bed. Now I'm a, uh, right? Zena princess warrior kind of thing. But back then I was like, oh my God. Oh, what did you say, Schmags? Oh, right. Ugh. Okay. Don't judge younger Melanie. Melanie. Okay. So, um, what she says is that, you know, talk, they, maybe you can talk this out so that you take a lot of the pressure off of each other and you stop over And this is like in a healthy relationship right? I, I'm not sure you can fix this in a relationship with a dude who just hates you, <laughs> right? Like so many of the men do. Or they may need to go to a professional. Now, are they willing to do that? Mm -hmm. They're so reluctant to go to a therapist, but maybe if it means, you know, not being able to, uh, maybe they'll go, who knows? But to me, it's a big red flag if a man is not willing to pay someone to help him with problems, because that's a level of pride and hubris and uh, and just being a coward that I don't want to be with. And also this idea around not making Schmegs a performance and O as the goal, right? Like I think it should be the goal for women because it's we're so used to being told that like it doesn't matter. We're faking it. All that crap. So for me, the O is a big goal, but I almost am a little too attached to like, I need my O because I became like ruthless about it because I went, you know, until I was 36 without even knowing what it felt like for real. Like the earth shattering kind. But rather with a relationship that's more based on friendship and love. Taking this pressure off and making it more about this is a shared experience. Right? Where we both uh, care about each other's pleasure. And he, if it's a man, really cares about mine. But like we care about each other. That's what it should be about, right? Um, but it's really hard to unlearn this like, Ooh, like this is a, you have, this, a plus B equals C, you know, whatever. And then this part I wrote, sometimes when I go back and read my stuff, I'm like, oh God, Melanie, you had a little uh, deconstructing to do there. I, I talked about how a lot of men on the apps wouldn't meet up with me, especially if I sent a photo. And I was like, maybe this is why they wouldn't meet up with me. The pressure. Men are dealing with sit, Dallas, Dallas pressure shot. No. I firmly disagree with this whole paragraph now. Maybe 2% it's about this. Um, basically, it boils down to men um, not seeing you as a human, being too lazy to make the effort, being too cheap to use gas money um, and wear and tear on their car to drive over to wherever and meet you. Like this? I firmly disagree. I gave men way too much uh, benefit of the doubt here. Um, most men would meet up with me because A, they're either cheating and they don't, and I don't know it and they want photos. Don't ever send men photos. Never. Don't send men photos. Even if you're dating, they're showing their friends. Or they're too forking lazy and they want you to be only fans, but you're not getting paid. Don't send photos. So I disagree with this. I'm so sorry I included this. I wish I could rewrite it, but I can't. The takeaway here is that corn is not the problem. It's not the problem. It is a problem. But the main problem with these issues is men's refusal to deal with themselves. That's the problem. Or to communicate with their partner. Or because they don't actually want to be with you or commit to you. Or they're married and are feeling shame. Or a whole host of other things. But don't reduce it to corn. Because that is just another way of saying, oh well, boys will be boys.